welcome to the Real Estate Modulus podcast, where we bring you the latest insights and trends in the ever-changing world of real estate. Whether you're a seasoned investor, a first-time buyer, or simply interested in the world of property, our podcast is designed to provide you with valuable information and expert advice. From discussing the latest market trends and investment strategies to exploring innovative technologies and design trends, myself, Dr. Mahmoud al Burai, and my co host, Cecilia Rinaldo, will share our knowledge and expertise to help you make an informed decision in the real estate industry. So please sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of real estate on our podcast. This episode is powered by ThinkProp, the leading Abu Dhabi-based real estate training institute. Whether you're starting your career in real estate or looking to take it to the next level, ThinkProp offers diverse range of courses certified by the Department of Municipalities and Transport, DMT of Abu Dhabi, with both in-person and online classes available at affordable prices, ThinkProp provides flexibility to fit your schedule. This institute is dedicated to developing a stronger real estate industry through knowledge and expertise. Visit ThinkProp website at thinkprop.ae to learn more. Today, we have a special guest, the top real estate lawyer in town, Arash Zad, founder of Zad Law Firm. With over 20 years of experience, Arash knows the ins and outs of the industry and specializes in real estate and corporate disputes. He has successfully represented and assisted top real estate companies and investors in Dubai with their legal needs. So. So. <laughs> On today's episode, we have a special guest, mm-hmm. Mahmoud. Who do we have today? The people that everyone loves. Who? The lawyers. Ah, <laughs> well, it depends if they resolve their problems, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, mm. not so much. Hi, Arash. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you Welcome. so much for coming. I'm so thrilled to be loved, at least by a group of people. <laughs> <laughs> a small percentage we don't get that. of people. We don't get that a lot, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate that. Thank you so we much. We always see people that, oh, can you help us to solve this? But please, without lawyers. Same. But you always need a lawyer in such cases. Oh, they take a lot of money and time. I say, no, we still have great uh, lawyers who don't take a lot of money. <laughs> well, uh, I have to agree um, to a certain extent with these people because there are a lot of lawyers that they are not familiar with the business side mm-hmm. of the matter. And that causes a lot of problem because mm-hmm. if you're just a lawyer mm-hmm. and you don't know anything about the business, you could create more uh, struggle and you can create more delays in a business without uh, any mm-hmm. uh, necessity, right? Yeah. But if you know about both aspects, then they should not think Amazing. like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we're here today to have a conversation with you on yeah. interesting stuff in real estate. Cecilia, what okay. do you think? Yeah, Rash, look, I want to get it straight in because I want to make sure we get as much as you can and you have to promise you're going to tell us how it is, give us much important advice so people can perhaps uh, get guided by the things that are happening in the market because sure. I'm sure... There's a lot of investors and customers who are in distress. They want, you know, information. So let's talk about contracts, right? The MOU, sure. the Form F. So the contract between the, the buyer and the seller. Um, in a market that is hot as we are right now, I'm sure you get in a situation where people sign mm-hmm. the contract. The next day, the price goes up again. The <laughs> seller can get agitated. Some brokers might call the seller, no, mm-hmm. I got you a better buyer. Mm-hmm. So what happens when the seller backs out of the deal? Now, the MOU normally, or the Form F, it says, uh, you know, the the broker typically takes in trust the deposit, uh, sometimes from the sellers, um, always from the buyers. Then there seems not to be a full rule on this. I've seen situations where both put a deposit in, sometimes it's just the buyer. But I believe the principle is, 
the seller's putting the property as the instrument, so therefore he's not required to put a deposit, but that's, please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong. But what you see on a booming market is a lot of sellers trying to get out the contract. What happens in this case? So uh, you, you're correct. Uh, some, I mean, majority of times um, you see that uh, when the price changes, that kind of motivates some sellers to not respect and honor their agreement. Yeah. Uh, buyers, they always put a de uh, security depo a deposit check. And sellers, some cases, the real estate companies, they ask them to put a security check. Uh, but nevertheless, when this kind of uh, event happens, um, seller will just uh, back out mm -hmm. and will stop communicating. And then next you see they're going to go and sell the property to someone else. Mm -hmm. So even before that, what I would normally suggest to uh, to the buyers is that uh, try as much as you can to convince the brokers to take a security check from the seller just to make the whole thing more legal. Mm -hmm. And you know better, yeah? If things goes wrong, uh, the broker cannot release this check okay. uh, to the other party unless if there is a judgment from the court. And this uh, is clearly stipulated in the agreement itself. So, but at the end of the day, it creates more seriousness from both parties if both have put their checks. That's mm. number one. Mm. But if they have not done that and seller backs out, then the buyer normally has two options. Um, most people say only one. I would like to say two because I have experience in uh, getting another option as well mm -hmm. uh, in this scenario. Uh, option number one will be to file a case against the seller and ask the court to cancel the contract based on the default and um, uh, get the compensation, which is a 10% of the selling price, mm -hmm. the amount of the deposit check. Mm -hmm. uh, that's doable. In most cases, of course, we have to read the agreement, examine all the clauses, to make sure that you know uh, it's a clear default or no. Uh, it will be very much detailed. I don't want to get into it. But uh, if everything is in favor, then we can uh, claim and get the 10% plus 5% interest, mm -hmm. which is a legal interest. The second option will be to enforce the agreement and ask the court to execute the agreement and transfer the property to the buyer. Okay. So in some cases, the property value went up. The buyer doesn't want the compensation, wants mm. the actual property, Sure. Yes. right? Because it's worth it for them. Yes. So then they come to us and they say that, no, we want the property and we will fight for that. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we can win that. In fact, I have done that twice. So well, that's that's good to know. Yeah. So if, if I break down, I want to go back what the things you, you said. So taking a check from the seller, as from my experience, this is something that a lot of the most sophisticated brokerage, they would ask. But is the seller obliged to do that or, or this is a contractual negotiation? So they have to convince them, yeah, because it's, it's against the norm, unfortunately. But it's and not against the law. It's not against the law. No, okay. of course it's not. Okay, it's, pra but it's, it's a against, practice. Yeah, it's against practice. Yeah. Okay. So normally sellers, they, they think that this is their market because their property is high in demand. Sure. So they say that, okay, if you are insisting on getting a security check from me, I'm not going to deal through you. Right. I'm just going to go to another broker. Okay. Mm -hmm. They will do the same job and they will not ask me for the, for the security yeah. check. But if you are giving them a good deal as a broker, for example, if you are bring him a good buyer with a good offer, then he might think twice to go to another person. Maybe he will not have such an offer. Actually, there, there is a point that I want to share based on Form F. There is a good thing about Form F is that once you sign it as a buyer and seller, it locks the property and land department system. Yes. So if you as a seller don't cooperate with the buyer, then there is an opportunity that your property will be locked for mm. a long time. Because the only way to unlock it is that, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's about the contract expires or they both cancel it. Uh, mutually. Mutually. Absolutely. So also seller have some pain if they want to go into the route of selling to someone else. Mm. They may have some block on their property that they cannot sell it for a while. Mm. But definitely, I think I agree on in terms of legally we need people to take uh, legal st stuff i mean a lot of them they want to solve it like without going to the courts absolutely so this is a very interesting point that you raise and um, because i have lots of clients coming to me and tell mm -hmm. me that okay the seller is in default 
mm-hmm. right? Mm. And there is a form F signed. When we say he's in default, it means that the uh, form F is already expired. Mm. Because if it's not expired, there's still a chance that the seller will come back mm. and finalize the deal, mm. right? So if the form F is expired, it means that through the REST app and land department, this property is no longer blocked. Correct mm. me if I'm wrong. Because the, the, the blockage mm. will be till the expiry of the, uh, of the form F. Then after that, the property will not be blocked. A lot of time is that before the expiry, they usually the the the, the, the law says or the, the the I think the form itself says it's one month, and if it's a cash or if it's a mortgage, if it's a mortgage, it can be re- renewed if there is still issues with bank. Right. If it's a cash, it has to be executed. Right. If it's not, then they will ask for a renewal, and both has to ha- both parties have to agree on the renewal Sign, of yes. it. So sometimes one party approves, some other party does not mm-hmm. approve, and this is where they come and start complaining to land department. Right. But but typically there are clauses on the contract that would automatically, not from the system perspective because it's locked in by the mm. form, but I've seen clauses which may be something that would help people in the future where you can automatically extend the contract if there is any delay beyond the control, right? Mm. Yeah, delay from third party, normally they extend for another 15 days mm-hmm. or so. Yeah. Uh, that is, in most of contracts I have read, there there is such a clause. Uh, however, if we will have a mechanism that we can block the property of a yeah. seller who is in default, mm. that would be amazing. Mm. Yeah. Because right now the client comes to me and tells me that, Arash, I want you to file a case and get... Uh, the compensation yeah. okay but what if the seller goes and sells the property a lot of time what happens from my experience that uh, we tell people uh, we will block it for you but go to the court and get uh, from the judge a ruling to block it for longer time i mean i think entities here government entities can block it for one week or so extra okay but then if you have to want, if you want to have more block, mm. then it has to go through the court. I mean, so th- through the court, yeah, I, it's absolutely understandable. But through the court, if we are going to ask the court to cancel the contract and get us the compensation, there is no blockage on mm. uh, through this method. The only way that we can request a block is through. Uh, filing a precautionary yeah. attachment case, yeah. yes. which is a totally different case. And I have to say that in majority of cases that we have filed, the judge does not uh, accept uh. that. They will dismiss it. Mm. Nowadays, we receive so more dismissal than approval from the court That's side. Because they want to make sure you know everything is legit and they are not just blocking people's uh, properties. Yeah, course, yeah. And, and then they will approve. Otherwise... Mm. We haven't. That's why I don't um, suggest to to my clients to go through that r- r- route, you know, because they are uh, taking uh, an extra step. And then, if I'm not sure that you know they will for sure get the, the right result, I normally don't advise them even. Mm. So going back also to your point on the checks, right? Because regardless, if you take a check from the seller, you are normally taking check of the buyer. Right. Um, and if if one uh, becomes in default, you still the broker cannot pass the check no. to the mm. defaulting party. Yeah. It needs a court order. Right. Do you see or have you witnessed even you Mahmoud brokers actually giving the check? In the past we had some cases, but now we don't. Right. So now there's an understanding. The one, yes. Right. There's mm. an understanding. Yeah. You cannot yeah. do that. You cannot. Yeah. Right. So uh, the contract actually says, you know, when you're in default, Clearly. the check is, is yours, Clearly, but yeah. they cannot enforce that. Right. So this is another important point. There is a clause that says that the broker cannot pass on this uh, check to the uh, to the other party unless if they get a court order. Mm, that okay. is already clear. It's in the template even. Or both parties maybe agree. If they both agree, if yes. Yeah, say, of course. I don't. Uh, the buyer say I don't want the ten percent. Yes. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Well, who says that? Maybe. In some cases they do. Really? I had two situations. Yeah. yeah, because they are happy. They are happy, the, and they, they sold a, a villa for 1.5 million. Mm. Now the value of this villa is uh, is 2.5 million. Mm. Mm. Okay, so they're happy. Not it's to an have increase the of one million, mm. and then the, the, the penalty is what 150 thousand. Yeah. he's yeah. more than happy yeah. to even pay twice. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so they will. The reason that this because otherwise this is so redundant. Why do we need the check mm. if you cannot pass it on, right? Yeah. So they have this check in place in for such conditions sure. that if both parties agree, there's agreement from both sides. But it's it's small, right? Typically, people will yeah. will walk away. 
But the same question you asked Cecilia, we get uh, asked in a different way when the market in another, in another situation. Mm. When the market is is not doing good, usually the buyers, they want to get out of the deal because they feel the price is going down and they got it at higher price. True. So this situation, nowadays we say seller mm. are backing away because mm. they get higher price. Mm. But at a certain point of time, you may get buyers want to get out. So it's almost the exactly. same kind of... Uh, uh, situation right applies to both yeah and especially when buyers cannot take mortgage right often i s- suppose lawyers suggest to ensure there are clauses to say if your mortgage is not approved that you can get out of the contract without any penalties yes good something. that you brought this up i have to use this platform and, and announce yeah. this yeah because this clause is extremely important cecilia sure. yeah. people they are neglecting unfortunately mm-hmm. one of the issues uh, uh, doctor is that People, when they are signing contracts, they are not specialized, they are not uh, experienced investors in most cases, and they do not consult with the right person. Mm. If they get their contracts read and vetted by a lawyer, they can uh, avoid so many hassles in the the future. So they are a mortgage buyer, and they don't have a proper uh, drafted uh, mortgage uh, clause in their agreement, mm. which could basically uh, <coughs> save them, mm. right? And then they will go and they apply, they get rejected, and when they want to practice the clause, sorry, the clause is it's so not vague. There, so you there are so much, yeah, big with yeah. and and, the, and then they have to pay compensation. Which brings to another topic: um, why, still, and I don't think we have a straight answer, but in mature markets like the US and the UK you would the brokers wouldn't do the sales contract right this was would normally managed by an AS, mm. uh, escrow agency or by a legal firm uh, to ensure there is that you know biased um, mm. yeah. firm or person involved looking after both sides do you think this is a practice that needs to change because this can be voluntary right like age, mm. uh, brokers could reach out to escrow agencies or conveyancing companies and say, listen, you manage my transactions. There's nothing stopping yeah. them. Actually, uh, a, lo- a lot of times we see some brokerage companies have their own conveyancing, right. which right. Is also can be a conflict of interest in a way. <laughs> right. Uh, in terms of lawyers and non-lawyers, this is a question we always get asked, but the government here in, the U- in Dubai has done uh, standard agreements which is a b and i and f yes but also people can add clauses yes, to these contracts add, as yeah. long as it doesn't contradict with the major input mm. so uh, i'm not sure uh, Raj, what do you think in terms of uh, the question i know lawyers they usually want no, i to want <laughs> i wanted you to answer this because i think uh, it's your department i'm, I'm more than mine but uh, uh, in, in my opinion when it comes to a second opinion or, or a, a biased entity. Yes, 100% brokers are biased. They want to close deal just fast. Yeah, um, We see lots, unfortunately, in some unprofessional uh, brokerage uh, firms, you see that um, even uh, there is a discrepancy between Arabic and English. Okay, mm-hmm. And the Arabic clearly says, if there is any conflict, the Arabic language will okay. proceed. Yeah. Uh, will supersede. Yeah? Sure. So... And the buyer or seller who are signing this, they don't speak or read Arabic. Mm. So they are signing on the, uh, based on the English side. True. Imagine, true. Yes. right? So yes. this is extremely unprofessional. Yes. So if you are doing a translation, you have to do a proper translation. So mm. when they sign, they are safe. At least they know their rights. Yeah. So going back to your question, definitely it has to be uh, uh, an, uh, an entity who is not biased who is professional in handling this kind of matters, Mm. and they have no take out of this. Mm -hmm. Um, Brokers, they just want to make it fast. Uh, The conversation that we had earlier, um, they don't want to hire lawyers because they think their lawyers, they make things more difficult and complicated. Mm -hmm. So I I won't say only lawyers. It could be, as you mentioned, Mm -hmm. convincing companies or uh, a third party who, 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 who are expert in this. Yeah, and even the pressure sometimes as someone who an uh, um, investor I bought and sold, mm. you get the OTP from land department, then the same minute you get a call from the broker, yeah, please approve it. Mm. I want to read, it's two, yes. three pages. Oh I want to God. go through. Yes. Approve it, it's, it's a standard one. Yes. Yeah, but I, I recommend that anyone who wants to buy and sell, all these standard forms are there on the website of land department. Print them, go through them line mm. by line. They're in Arabic and English. 
consult with a lawyer. I think mm-hmm. lawyers nowadays are needed in, in several cases. Yes. Uh, so just to be protected. I mean, the broker wants fast uh, process. Mm-hmm. They know it by heart. They think mm-hmm. it's standard. No need for you to read contracts. No need for you to know anything. Just put the password you get from land department yes. and that's put it. Put the standard. Yeah. But it's not standard at all. And this is the point. You know, you have so many additional clauses that yeah. you have to introduce especially when the seller has a mortgage the buyer is paying the mortgage there's so many variations on the transactions mm-hmm. that require i mean i personally would always use a rush to <laughs> to do all the legal paperwork because you know you need that second eye to ensure your best interest is in place right, right. and and an interesting point also uh, i've seen many uh, real estate brokers when they give the contract to their uh, clients in the actual template, what you mentioned, yeah, the government did the job for us and they created the template. So what they do at the last line, they write, there is an addendum. Yes. Whatever comes in the addendum supersedes the template. Yes, yes. We've seen it and I think the, some brokerage companies got warning yeah. that they cannot. And some of them actually said this is this is just. Uh, formality. As if it's a, co- yeah, it's a yeah, cover yeah. page. The yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You say no. The government uh, form is the the one that to be used. Whatever yes. is in there, you cannot change it in this uh, additional agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. And not contradict so, yeah. it as well. Yeah, you cannot exactly. contradict it. How, how, how do you say that? So, yes. so then the bottom line is you l- use a lawyer, use an escrow agency, a uh, conveyance, use a third mm. party to ensure that your documentation is right. Because yes. buying a property... It's a like huge that. investment, you're not <laughs> buying bread, <laughs> chocolate, <or something. laughs> chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. which yeah. then Arash brings to the, the, the question, you know, if you're a first time buyer, what you should consider? A first time buyer, um, number one, they have to uh, make themselves uh, familiar with the law as much as possible. Sure. There are so many laws, regulation, real estate laws, there are templates as uh, we, we talked about. Um, they need to start reading them. Mm-hmm. If they can do it themselves, better. If they cannot do it or they think they are not competent enough, mm-hmm. consult with a lawyer. To understand the, the the legal framework of the UAE and precisely with Dubai. Yes, you might be an investor back at your home, but it's a whole different um, uh, game over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the laws are different, re- uh, regulations are different. I have lawyers real estate investors in their own countries and they come here and they consult with me mm-hmm. because they know they are lawyers they sure, know that they sure. have to consult sure. yeah so they come and they ask me arash explain to us how it works mm-hmm. in terms of uh, mm-hmm. real estate investment in dubai so i explain to them mm-hmm. so number one is to familiarize yourself with the laws and regulation how things works uh, make sure that you understand the uh, you know the mainland how it works the, the projects you understand all that and uh, one important thing is to deal with the right the developer, if you're buying from the developer, and deal with the right and respectable, reputable, professional real estate broker. Mm-hmm. If you are dealing with a good company, uh, not necessarily big, it could be a small, yet professional. Sure. Right? They are in the market. They are not just open last week and, you know, they are trying to close deals really fast. Um, you will be on the safe side more, okay? And then when it comes to signing the paper, that's the time that you need to make sure you understand what you're signing. Yes. And financially, you are prepared for it. If you are a mortgage buyer, make sure that mortgage clauses are there. Make sure that your bank is serious and you got your initial approval, Mm -hmm. okay? And and then you can jump into it. Some people actually recently, they were applying for a mortgage and then there was the increase in interest rates and all of a sudden... What used to be affordable is not affordable anymore. Yeah. So again, it's important for people also to know their net worth and how much they can afford and if the bank can give them and all these details in advance before even signing the agreements. I think they can. You can. They can apply for initial approval. Yeah. So when you apply for initial approval, the bank uh, evaluates your uh, net worth. You evaluates your your uh, profile and will tell you that okay, up to this much, you can get mm-hmm. um, a mortgage from us. Uh, interest rates, everything is clear, and then you're going to just apply. Yeah. But even when the bank gives you a mortgage, they give you a, per- a percentage of what they value the property at. So if you're buying it at $1 million and the bank thinks it's 900 then this is how much he's going to give you. So also you have to be ready for that Perfect. discrepancies and stuff. So Perfect. all these calculations have to be done in advance before getting and signing and then being in a 
travel and then how do I get out of Very it? Very important point. Very important point. That's why I always put this in the agreement. Mm -hmm. And I will say part of the, and I'm giving away now a lot of yeah. information. Yeah? yeah, it's okay. Thank you for the yeah. information. No, no worries, no worries. <laughs> but what we do is that we say that not only is conditional to getting the final approval, we also mention that it's conditional to getting the, uh, the right evaluation. If we get an evaluation less than this percentage, there is no deal. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah. there's no deal. That's, I like it. That's so that's the way we, we that, that's the way that we protect our clients. Mm. These are the small details that can basically change the whole ball game. Absolutely. Mm. And to close on this topic, I would say for brokers, for buyers to be aware of brokers asking them to buy this deal with the idea of flipping, or you can sell and get X amount of money. So as you said, you have to be. Uh, fully aware of your financial capabilities and don't invest in real estate with the view of exiting the next day because it's a mm. long-term view you should have and, um, you know, so you mm. don't regret later, right? True, mm. yeah. Let's move into the whole mm. landlord and tenant conversation because also a very hot topic this day. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Mahmoud and I were discussing <laughs> a bit earlier about evictions and obviously we are in a... An increase and... In, yeah. in a... In a I would say it's a seller's market a little bit because, you know, certain pockets of the market, there's, there's huge demand and there's a lot of evictions going out, right? So one of the questions that people always ask is, if I get an eviction and during that process, the property sold someone else, do I have to still move because now my landlord is a different landlord? Okay, a good one. Um, so let me rephrase it uh, to make sure I understood you correctly. So sure. the owner sent an eviction letter that they want to sell the property correct, yes. and give them 12 months to evict. To notice, correct. And then during because probably because the new owner wants to move in, right? This is typically... Uh, or to sell. They are trying to yeah, sell here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if they, because you have to give a notice for a specific reason that you want to sure. use the property sure. for. Yeah? So if you are selling, you're going to give a notice for the selling the property. And then during this uh, notice period, which is 12 months, mm -hmm. the, the owner actually finds a seller, yes. uh, sorry, a buyer, and sells the property. Correct. Now the tenant wants to know if they have to honor the deadline or no. Yes. The answer is no. The answer is no because hold on. Mm -hmm. yeah hold on. because yeah. previously it wasn't I the case. I didn't know that. Previously it wasn't the case. Previously the uh, you wait uh, for the remaining uh, period of time and then the new owner can ask for eviction. Now it's not the case anymore. Now as per the new rules and regulations, the notice that was served by the first owner will not stand anymore. So the new owner, the moment they take over they will serve another notice and they have to give them another 12 months for a tenant, then ask for eviction. Mm -hmm. mm, that's super interesting. It is. It changes a lot of things, especially uh, it affects the properties that uh, are tenanted. No, and, and that's the whole point. So many people receiving eviction notice and they are asking this point. You yeah. Know? So if I'm buying a property and I want to use this property for my own use, for my self use, sure. then, and the property has a tenant, I should not really rely on, on the, the notice that was sent, the, notice, unless if the a tenant original. decides to leave. Yes, right? of course, yes. Uh, but otherwise I have to do my calculation that I'm buying this property, I still have to give a 12 months notice, then only I can ask for eviction. Hmm. Wow, that's, that's, very important information mm. because a lot of people rely, both the tenant gets in distress because he needs to move in, mm. you know, brokers viewing the properties every five minutes, which obviously they should allow, right? The tenant should They're allow viewing, to a yeah, certain yeah, as extent. As long as it's reasonable. And but they also should understand that, that when, if the property is sold before the expiry of the 12 months, then another 12 months, you, you're going to actually, you, you could mm. ask the new yeah, Landlord. actually, a lot of sellers they use this uh, eviction notice as also uh, an interesting thing. They tell the new buyer that, look, there is an eviction. Yes. Two months are left, and this yeah, guy yeah, will yeah. leave. So a lot of people buy with an aim of moving. Then yes, they find absolutely. themselves renting out. Yeah, I've heard a lot of such stories. Um, and in some cases, the seller they don't know this. Yeah. So they're not misguiding. Yeah. They're actually telling them that what they think it's true, but it's not. So they say that only two months is left and then you can ask for eviction because they are not aware of this new mm. uh, change in the law. And when was right. this passed? Is it recently? Uh, no, a few months now. 
Okay. So it's it's more of our, uh, I think it's more of uh, rent dispute center uh, decisions. Uh, it's a judgment issued by judgment the court of issue. appeal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a judgment issued by the court of appeal in uh, RDC, and now it became the the new practice. Yeah. Okay, so if you are a tenant, so now you know. That if you, <laughs> if you don't really want to move out of the property uh, and the property is sold within your tenure, you can mm. still stay a little bit longer. Now and the sellers will call me why you are spreading this information. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a buyer, then be, uh, be, also be careful, ready because right? you may not move yeah. to this property. But again, maybe more of negotiation and yeah, of you can course. go talk to the tenant. Yeah. You We're can talking solve about extremes here, right? Yeah. True, true. Um, recently, I did a negotiation on behalf of my client. We paid uh, one month rent of the new house. Yeah. We paid for the moving company yeah. to make everything super smooth for them. Yeah. And they were more than happy yeah. to, to move out. Some people will, will Compromise, take it the easy yeah. way. We don't need always to go to the court. I no, think absolutely Talking not, to right. the tenant, landlord, tenant, can yeah. make a lot of difference. Especially if you've been leaving the property for a long time yeah. and now is the time to, you know, move on. Maybe they can think and buy a new property. The <laughs> only thing that stops them is when the rent has increased significantly. Of course, yeah. Mm. That's when the tenant will be very difficult to mm. convince. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because they know that they're going to lose a lot. So why they need to move out. So, they, they so, so then for the landlords, the best thing is to ensure the property is fully vacated yeah. after the 12 months and then put in the market yeah. for sale by then. Correct. On, on this regard, actually, there's something interesting to share is that People who evict for personal use, they think that once the la the tenant leaves, they can rent it out to someone else. Yes. And actually, if the tenant who left found out, he can go and sue them and ask for compensation, which can be sometimes even equivalent to the difference. I used to pay 100000 he rented out at 200000 This extra 100000 may be giving to this tenant who left as a compensation. So if you want to use it for own use, make sure that you use it for two years for your own use. Mm. So you cannot just evict them for own use and then and give then it to and someone it. else. And rent it again. That's a and lot that's of... That's very important. Yeah. 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 Okay. So now let's talk about the rental increase in the calculator, right? So today when you go to the calculator, it says you can increase up to 20%, but some landlords say no, but you know my property now is worth much more. Maybe they own a long-term contract for many years. Is there any uh, way that, as a lawyer, uh, you guys could help in changing these decisions or you are stuck with the 20%, that's the maximum you can increase? Okay, so let me give you a brief story about how, how things were being dealing with before. Okay. So previously we just had the calculator. So yes. the law says that if the calculator allows this increase, uh, then you would increase. And then there is a, a table which mm -hmm. shows if it's 10% um, uh, below the average market rent, then yeah. you can increase 5%, then 5, 10, 15, 20. Mm -hmm. Maximum increase was 20%. Mm -hmm. So this was the normal way of, of, of dealing with this matter. Sure. Uh, both uh, uh, the landlord and tenant, they can just go and check themselves through the um, land department's website. So then what happened is that um, there were... Number one, the calculator was not getting updated on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, So the rent that was there belonged to a year ago, sure. and it was not updated. Later on, they started updating it every six months, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But still, it was not updated in terms of single building in a single in a, in a, in a project. Yeah. For example, if we are talking about uh, Marina, yeah. okay, or talking about Palm Jumeirah, or downtown even, Okay, there are very old buildings that they are that, that the rent as per the rental calculator is the same as the new buildings. Right. Or in some projects, they are upgraded buildings sure. that are different than the neighboring buildings. And you have situations as well. I've seen like in some developments, they say the four bedroom, but there are different types of four bedrooms, yeah, right? That are true, not true. detailed. So it's not customized to that particular yes, building or correct, that yeah. unit. Mm -hmm. So what would happen? The the owner will encounter some loss here, yeah, because they have to yeah. they have to go as per the old one. So what the government did, they said that okay, now you can apply for evaluation certificate. Mm -hmm. And that is you can do it through the uh, um, REST app and you can do it through the website, you can just apply for that. And what will happen? The uh, authorized experts, they will do an evaluation mm -hmm. based on that particular building. Market and, value. Yeah, they will tell you that okay, the market value of this 
is this much. Right. And then this will supersede what the, the outcome of the calculator. Okay. In some cases, the calculator does not allow any increase, yet this evaluation shows a huge increase in the, in, in the rent. 20% or even more. It so, could be above 20%? So um, the law says that uh, the maximum rent that you can uh, increase as per this calculator is 20%. Sure. This is at the judge's discretion sure. to see and evaluate based on this um, evaluation okay. certificate. Yeah. But I've seen some cases, yeah, that can go. If there is a convincing case yeah. and this property this has been rented for a long time and way below the market, so maybe appointing a, an expert that gives um, above twenty percent increase sure. may be taken seriously. Yeah. yeah. So the judge could issue a judgment above that. It's called the market rent, or we call it in Arabic ijar al methil, equivalent rent. How yep. much if it's equivalent situation? How much it's rented out now? Hmm. So there's a lot of changes actually going on and, and different perspectives that people probably are not aware that they can, you know, look at the best interest, both landlords and tenants. So this is this is very nice. Um, mm, but Cecilia, I always say that people need to go through two laws for rental, 26 of 2007 sure. and 33 of 2008. These are the most important two laws when it comes to rent and also the rent calculator decree. Hmm and rent calculator itself and be aware of all these challenges and also make sure that their uh, information is updated their email if there is also a notice it has to be done in the right way mm -hmm. it shouldn't be i called him to evict no calling is not the way no. it should be an official way right absolutely right. yes yes it's important to know how the law works because if you are an investor you are a landlord you're into a business you need to understand all the laws and regulations that affects your business and it changes right you have to keep yourself updated. Mm. That's why I say that if you are not into business of reading and researching a lot, then at least consult with someone who who does mm -hmm. this for a living, yeah? Yeah. Ejari. So I hear cases of people that normally they'll sign a tenancy contract and the landlord does not register Ejari. Does that allow, let's say the tenant finds a cheaper apartment, can, can he get out of the deal can he, if the Ejari is not registered? So what is a jury and what is a tenancy contract? Mm. Yeah, A tenancy contract is a binding agreement on its own. Sure. Okay. The moment you sign, this contract is binding. Okay. So both uh, landlord and tenant, they are bound by, by the terms of this agreement. Correct. Um, the tenancy contract, as per the law, has to be registered. Okay. So this falls on any party. Mm -hmm. So if the landlord is not doing, the tenant can do can it. Can do it. You can do this in 10 minutes. Yeah, it's an easy task. Right. So you cannot use this as an excuse to exit the contract. Okay. However, mm. if there is any issues that the seller can actually not register this unit okay. through the HRE for okay. any reasons, okay. it could be multiple reasons. Like for example. Okay. If he has any problems or if, he, uh, I don't know, in the land department, it could be a block on him, okay. on, him on him personally, mm -hmm. okay? If this person is not allowed to do any sort of transactions due to any reasons, mm -hmm. okay? Then he cannot enter into uh, this uh, contract. Sure. It means that when he signed the, uh, the tenancy contract, he did not have the capacity to sign such an agreement because sure. he cannot get it registered. Sure. If that happens, then only the tenant can use this and file a case and ask for cancellation of this agreement. He cannot just walk away. Right. He needs to ask the court mm -hmm. to, to cancel. cancel the agreement because an agreement was signed already. Okay, so it, yeah. it, it just so that you have to fulfill the contract. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's not right with Jerry. Yeah, and if someone decides to leave, like a, a tenant decides to leave, most of the time he has to pay the two months. Penalty. Two months. Yeah. But what happens, for example, when the landlord does not pay the service charges, for example, he, mm. throughout the contract, and then the tenant cannot get the car to access the gym or yeah. he cannot remove no, that's a, that's a situation have been discussed actually the law number six 2019 for the service charge says that the management company cannot uh, prohibit the landlord slash tenant from using the the parking lot or any facility because of non-paying service charge so non-paying service charge there can be a block on a landlord's right. so he cannot have a new tenancy contract on 
a property. So if his property is not rented out, okay. then it's blocked. So if he wants to have a new tenant... So we'll affect the next yeah. tenant, but not the existing one. But the one. existing tenant should not, should not suffer be. because okay. the landlord's not paying the service charge. That's By the great. way, this is one of the reasons that the landlord cannot register the new contract. Right, that's what I thought, yeah. Mm. There's a block on them. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's important. And also, if there is any change in the tenancy contract, it should be done at least three months before the expiry. Otherwise, you cannot just wake up and say, I want to increase by 10% as per the rent cal calculator. Yes, the rent calculator says you can increase. Yes. But because you did not uh, abide by the time given to you, it should be three months n uh, notice, notice minimum. Yeah. yeah. You cannot increase the rent for that year because you did not commit to the time, right? Um, right, absolutely. Yes. And this is actually a very, very important point. Yeah. People need to be very cautious about the timing, the timing yes. of all of this. Because and, the of the, and the and method. And the method of notifying the person. Mm. So previously, we only had either through the notary mm -hmm. public or through a registered post. Right. Nowadays, the judges are accepting, even if you're sending through email, email. which the email is written and confirmed, in the tenancy contract. Yes, Ijari. That's the email we yeah. use. The if same, that is it needs to be the yeah. same email. Okay, so the judge will ask, did you receive it on remember. this email? You say, yes, I receive. Done. Okay. It's mm -hmm. considered as notified. What about WhatsApp? Sometimes people show WhatsApp. No, no. no. <laughs> What's, I haven't seen any judgment, yeah. to be honest with you, yeah, based on yeah. WhatsApp. Sometimes I've, I've seen one or two judgments where they look took it as extra evidence, but not as the only okay. evidence. Okay. But no, sending to the email registered is... Is, is the, the one, yeah, yeah. I know that we um, maybe surpass the time for the episode. I know, it's interesting I know, I know. It's so interesting. We need to I'm bring you back. So many oh, things, you. We'll We're definitely going to bring you back. I would be happy to 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 share more information. Thank you. Just. And uh, before we go, just let us know how do people get in touch with you? What are your uh, social media handles? Sure. Arash oh, is very popular. He has a lot of <laughs> followers. Oh, uh, no. Uh, they, everybody can find me with uh, the same handle, Arash Zod, A R A S H Z A D, uh, basically everywhere. My website and all social media platforms TikTok, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, Instagram. Even TikTok, everywhere. huh? Wow. Do you that's know how many followers he has? Do you know how many followers he has? Over 200,000. It's not a joke. Oh. We are so. we're talking to a celebrity here, Mahmoud. Oh, <laughs> uh, the gray <laughs> hair that shows <laughs> yeah, the wisdom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. You know, that's uh, that comes with the territory. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with the business. All right, guys. Thank you so Thanks much. So much. Thank, thank you for, for having coming me. for the Real Appreciate Estate. It podcast and Majlis it was great amazing. to have you yeah. yeah it's so amazing I, I appreciate what you guys are doing sharing this type of information with your uh, listeners it's an amazing move so thank you so much please thank carry you. on see you soon thank you <laughs> thank you bye thank you bye Mahmoud <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to the Real Estate Majlis podcast we hope you found this episode informative and insightful if you have any questions or feedback Please feel free to reach out to us.